You should always try out new things in life. Because life gets a little boring when you stick in the limits of what you know. Let me see your hand if you've ever tried something new. Well, if you've never, let me give you a chance. Look around the room. Find that one person that looks familiar to you. You got him? Then look around again. Find that one person that looks strange and weird to you. You got them? Then kindly please reach out your hand and ask their name and give them a handshake. Just give it a try. <laughs> Let me ask, did the person turn out to be weird and strange after all? No? So you would have never known this amazing, beautiful, handsome, fun and friendly person right next to you if you never gave it a try. Madam Curtis Chair, distinguished guest, fellow voice masters, ladies and gentlemen, I have personally been there a couple of times. I remember it was 2012, I was in primary, my school that is in southern part of Rwanda, when it was time for student leaders elections. And my aunt, who was also a teacher in the same school, came to me and said, Tony, you know what, I've served in this school for five years now, but I have never had the privilege of having one of my children take on a leadership position in the school. She looked down, took a deep breath, and looked back at me and said, give it a try. Now, back at school, I was famous being one of the three students from Kigali City, and this made me think the students hated me because they thought I was bossy. But I was wrong because I went for the elections and won and became the head boy of the school because I know that every accomplishment, whatsoever it is in life, it just begins with a decision to give it a try. Now, two weeks later, here I am in front of the school, reading out my resignation letter. Who wants to know why I was resigning after two weeks? I'll tell you anyways. It was an afternoon when I myself, with a bunch of boys and girls, who didn't want to study, attend the afternoon lesson. We decided to go to the library, only to find that the library was open with no librarian inside. And before we had enough of the fun of throwing around the books and tearing the papers out of the textbooks, she got back inside and she locked us inside. And the next morning, here I am, reading out my resignation letter. Now three years later, I'm now in high school and I happen to have a bunch of friends who all happen to be footballers. You know, they were the swaggerific boys. And one of them called Sammy came to me and said, would you mind coming with us for football trainings on Saturday morning? I looked back at him and said, I'll give it a try. Now here I am on Saturday, running around the pitch, struggling to breathe with my tongue out like a British bulldog, only because I'd been told to run around the pitch by the coach, 20 laps. Later on in the, in the trainings, the coach gave me a one-on-one -on -one challenge with the goalkeeper. Me being the striker, I had to score as many goals as I could. But I failed. And I went back home, I told my mother, I'm never going back there. She said, why? And she said, I said, because I want to have more sleep on Saturday morning. Now back at school, there was this amazing, tall, beautiful, brown, dark haired girl called Samantha. And I happened to love, have you ever been in love? In love, like once? Well, my love for her was deeper than that. I really loved her. She was an amazing singer. And I look at myself in the mirror, I say, Tony, you have to know this. The worst summary in life consists of three statements. I could have, I might have, and I should have. So I look at myself in the mirror, give it a try. So I go for this girl, I joined the music band because she was a singer. I joined as a piano student and it took me four weeks of attending these music classes only to know that Samantha, the girl I loved, was actually dating my music teacher. <laughs> Without hesitation, my music teacher suspended me indefinitely from the class. And a couple of months go by, we sit for the national exam, I go back home and I was heartbroken. I was frustrated. I'd not only failed in football, but I'd also failed to get my first girlfriend. Do you feel me? <laughs> I tell my mother, mother, I want to run out of the country. 
Now months go by, I find myself in the institute where I don't know anybody, nobody knows me. They were speaking a different language and I was like, I was confused. It was in the Jevaleko land. And there was this club where students used to meet over the weekends and they seemed happy. They used to move out of the school once in a while for trips. And I said, I'm going for this club. It was the Interact Club. And I joined the club as the president. And I can still remember the first time I had to give a speech to a live audience. I was really scared and frightened that I felt like I was going for public assassination, not public speaking. And after then is when I decided to go for public speaking courses. I went back home, I had sleepless nights watching speakers over the internet, learning about body language and all these things. And I know that I gave quite a number of better speeches thereafter. After high school is when I came back to Rwanda, my home country, Rwanda. And I happened to meet these two amazing gentlemen, Mr. Isaac and Ronald, who both saw me speak once and asked me, Tony, do you mind speaking on the Voice Masters Conference in May? And I remembered that I'd done public speaking back in high school. And I know that a man that is once stretched by new adventure can never, ever go back in its old dimensions. So I looked back at them and said, give it a try. I'll give it a try. And ladies and gentlemen, today I stand before you as a speaker, a rotoractor, a listener, and a leader, only because I decided to keep on moving. I decided to keep on trying, even after failing. I decided to keep on trying, because after every failure, I learned something. In primary, I learned that I have to take responsibility for my actions. In football, I learned obedience. For the piano, I learned that I have to listen. Listening is key, because the teacher always said, you have to listen before you put your hands on the keyboard. And I know that I am not the best. No, I'm not. But one thing I know for sure is that I'm trying my best. And I know that we do not know who we are unless we see what we can do. And if you want to be big, if you want to achieve big things in life, you should always look for the biggest opportunity in the room and give it a try. I want you to take a minute and think with me. Let's think a bit. What if Martin Cooper had not invented the first cell phone on the planet? If Mark Zuckerberg had not invented Facebook? I mean, if, if His Excellency Paul Kagame and the RPF group had not been brave enough to step up and build the country that nations admire today, think. What if my father, your father, your father, our fathers, had not dared to approach our mothers? We wouldn't be here. So ladies and gentlemen, in everything you do, if you cannot fly, then run. If you cannot run, just walk. If you can't walk, just crawl down. But don't stop moving forward. Because now that I've seen where I've come from and where I am because of trying new things, I have decided. I have made a decision that I will try. I'll try in the morning, I'll try in the night, and if the darkness of the night is too thick that I can't see what I'm doing, I'll fly to the sun. And if I get burned there, at least I'll die trying. Just give it a try. Thank you.